This is a story about a little narrow gauge railway called the Briscoe Highland Railway, but enthusiasts call it the Little Highland for short. Its narrow rails pass by green fields, forests, towns, lakes, and lots and lots of stations. We will embark on a journey and share lots of different adventures with the little engines and enjoy all the beautiful places the railway holds. On a beautiful spring morning, when the birds sing and there is barely a breeze in the air, many train spotters would stand at a wooden fence and watch a red saddle engine chuck by with a train. The engine is called James Clifford and he was pulling a passenger train and was on his way to a big station called Briscoe Central. This station was located in a city called Briscoe and James Clifford didn't really like it. Unlike the railway's small cam country stations, Briscoe Central was loud with lots of different platforms and engines from other railways. It was also where narrow and standard gauge engines met up and exchanged their passengers. A large tender engine crossly awaited them. Late again, I see. Your little engines are slower than tortoises, he said with arrogance. James Clifford was not prepared to stand any nonsense from the big engine. I'm not like. You can't even leave until the guard blows his whistle, which will be another ten minutes, he argued. The big engine smugly looked down at him. Well, I'm King Arthur, one of the King Arthur class, and I am always first at the station and last to depart. That's why my timetable is kept to perfection, he gloated. James Clifford didn't answer, and anxiously waited as his passengers boarded King Arthur's coaches. And soon, the mighty engine slowly departed. Huh, <laughs> show off. That afternoon, James Clifford's tank was nearly empty, so his driver stopped at a water tower. While his tank was being filled up, he saw his friend Peggy resting in a siding. He didn't waste time in telling her all about rude King Arthur. I despise standard gauge engines. They're so arrogant and think that they're better than us, he raged. Peggy sympathized with her friend, but wasn't too long putting him straight about something. I understand where you're coming from, and King Arthur may indeed be rude. But you cannot paint other engines in the same colour as him. Just because an engine's big, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's rude, she told him. The next morning, the firelighter came to the sheds as all the engine's drivers gradually arrived. Peggy's fire was lit first, and then the firelighter turned his attention to another engine called Gunter. James Clifford wanted to make it to the station extra early to beat King Arthur, and knew that he couldn't move an inch without a lit fire. Why isn't he lighting me first? he complained. Beside him was an engine called Misty, and she chuckled. Don't worry, I'm a diesel and don't have a firebox, so you most certainly will be next, she declared. Sure enough he was, and as soon as his fire glowed hot, he was anxious to start work. Driver, come on! Hurry up! he ordered. His driver quickly finished his cup of coffee before climbing into the cab. Usually James Clifford would happily relax and chat to the station masters while the passengers boarded, but today the guard's whistle couldn't come soon enough. At long last, he left the last station, and was now en route to Briscoe Central. Yeah. 
Upon reaching the platform, he couldn't believe his eyes. King Arthur had not yet arrived. Oh my! I've won! I've won! He announced in delight. The passengers disembarked his coaches and waited for King Arthur's arrival. Minutes passed and the big engine didn't come. If he doesn't arrive soon, we shall be knocked out of schedule and the passengers will be late, worried his driver. They both watched the clock impatiently and it was only five minutes until eleven o'clock, which was the time they were supposed to depart. Soon, a loud chuffing sound could be heard, so the driver looked behind and to his utmost joy, the train was approaching the platform. James Clifford smirked. He plotted revenge. To his surprise, it wasn't King Arthur pulling the train. It was a much larger engine. Sorry, we're lying. The engine that usually runs this route is stuck in a siding, the engine explained. Who are you? asked James Clifford in dismay. The engine gave him a warm smile. I'm Eclipse, the A2 Peppercorn. What is your name? she asked pleasantly. The little engine was puzzled with the big engine's surprisingly nice manners. Ah, uh, my name is James Clifford. What has happened to King Arthur? he asked. Eclipse slightly giggled. The turntable in our yard jammed this morning and he is trapped in the siding. Oh, he complained, shouted and cried, she laughed. James Clifford thought this was ever so funny and it was nice to speak with a big engine that was pleasant and friendly. That evening when he returned to the shed, his driver parked him beside Peggy. Guess what? I met another big engine today and she was really friendly, so you were correct. Just because one apple is bad, I should not let it spoil the bunch, he declared. The next morning, when he arrived at Briscoe Central, King Arthur had returned. James Clifford smiled with a gloating expression, but an embarrassed King Arthur tried his hardest to ignore him. So, are you not going to tell me that I'm late today? After all, I am a little engine, and my timetable is never as perfect as yours, he teased. King Arthur was filled with fury as he continued to goad him relentlessly. Did you enjoy your day off yesterday? I can't remember the last time I had a lazy day resting in a siding, he joked. King Arthur didn't utter a word, and James Clifford was now quite sure that he would never tease him again.